Lummy's Place is the classic Texas beer joint novel by Leon Hale. It's so well known that our challenge for this series was to find a backstory that hadn't been told too many times before. Many of us know the saga of how Bonnie's Place has missed being made into a movie, a long saga. Others of us have heard how one tavern Hale used as an inspiration now resides at the bottom of Lake Conroe. But I've been intrigued by the life lessons the book offers. As the book's description puts it, Bonnie's Place immerses the reader in the richly layered world of a rural tavern in East Texas with its vivid assemblage of Texas characters. When Joni Lancaster comes in, he is looking for a thief who stole a considerable sum of money from his ancient father. What he discovers is a far more complex reality than he expected. I asked Leon Hale how his story came about. One does not expect a morality theme at the heart of a novel about Texas beer joints. He told me he was married then into a religious family who disapproved of alcohol, and he received a certain amount of criticism for spending so much time in beer joints compared to the time he spent in church. But beer joints were central to his work. It's where he made a lot of contacts and friends over the long haul. He did it, he says, to get stories, the same reason he went into country churches. Bonnie's place came out of the realization that the people he met in rural taverns seemed just as good, selfless, and kind as those he met in church, sometimes better. He used some of the examples he saw of that behavior in the book. One important scene shows Bonnie, the tavern owner, feeding stew, beef stew, to the community, black and white, around 200 people. A purely selfless act, said one of the observers, unaware that Bonnie had stolen the meat. What we think of as good and bad behavior are braided like this throughout the novel, often to hilarious effect. Bonnie's place depicts a world of obvious weaknesses, enduring strengths, and the many small exaltations of life as it was 50 years ago. It's important to keep that fact in mind 50 years ago, because there is nothing politically correct by today's standards in Bonnie's place. Instead, we are invited into the world that was, warts and virtues alike, and very accurately rendered by the author. Bonnie walked out on the dance floor so he could look through the serving window and through the kitchen toward the barn. When he turned back to me, his face was dark again. We had a thing going, that old fella and me. He used to talk to me a lot about opening some kind of a place. He always wanted to go into a business like a pool hall. I'd keep telling him it took money to open a place. Finally, he said he had some money. Said if I'd go partners with him, we'd open us a hall. At first, I'd just kid it along with him. I'd say, sure, sure, we'll go partners. Hell, I thought he was just whistling Dixie. Then one day, by damn, he walked into that Mexican woman's place and called me to the back and tossed a package on one of the tables and kissed your tail if it wasn't $15,000 cash. I told him to go put it back where it came from before one of those winos knocked him in the head and took it off him. But no, hell no, he kept saying, take it, take it, open a place, we'll go partners. Finally, he just walked away, left me standing there looking at that money on the table. I bundled it up and took it home with me to the hotel where I was staying. Man, I didn't sleep all night lying there with that wad of money in my pillowcase, poking into the back of my neck. I don't know, Johnny, if you ever wanted 15,000 bucks, 
as bad as I did that night. All my life I've been daydreaming about just one good payday like that so I could get the hell away from towns, buy me a little piece of ground, get a few cows where there's trees and creeks. So finally before sunup I just took off, put that money in my suitcase and cut out and I never did go back.